Hey friends, welcome back. I am Jason and it is early morning right now. Just shipped the kids off to school. It's about 7 a.m. I guess. And yesterday I just finished a big adventure. We're three days on the river. We took stand-up paddle boards <laughs> down 20 miles, 20 plus miles of a section of river that was pretty much dried up. So our mission, our long-term mission is to go from basically North Georgia to the Gulf of Mexico, starting with a small little stream and ending up in the ocean. That's the goal. And we did the first three days, which I'm hoping are the three most difficult days because it was rough. <laughs> we were dragging, carrying, plodding along, slogging our way from point A to point B. Uh, it, was a, it was big, it was a big work big work day each day so the first day was like 11 hours of just carrying the board over trees and logs and just through the thicket of everything and when i say floating we floated uh, <laughs> such a small percentage like one percent of the day was floating and the rest was dragging uh, a 40 pound paddle board it was and all our camping gear and stuff as well so that was it was interesting uh we we came out of it pretty much unscathed for the most part. I mean, we have some bumps and bruises. Gregory cracked his melon on a rock, slipped and fell. I mean, the rocks were so slick. Uh, I mean, obviously, if you've ever spent any time in, a, in the river bottom, you know, you know what that's like. Slippery. The moss-covered rocks are awesome because you can kind of get some traction on the mossy rocks, but the ones that don't have moss on them are like ice. He cracked his melon on a rock on the first day. Uh, but we all, both of us slipped and fell a whole bunch and got bumps and bruises and stuff like that. I've got a little bit of pain right here. Ah, the top of my foot just from, you know, just overuse kind of injury. I might not even call it an injury. It's just, it just hurts. Um, but overall a pretty solid adventure. So the first three days we made it about 20 miles, give or take. And, um, the next time that we start this adventure, we'll pick up where we where we left off. So where we got picked up this time, at the end of our trip, we will start there and then keep working our way towards the Gulf of Mexico, Mobile, Alabama. That is the goal. Uh, pretty, pretty fun adventure, uh, and I'm excited to see where we're going to end up. I mean, it's just every bend in the river is kind of a new new surprise, you know, new a new sight, new smell, new critters. We saw river otters and bears and uh raccoons and uh great blue herons and you know all the typical river life that you might expect on a on a north georgia river but the river's going to get bigger hopefully and we're going to have a little bit more water to float in and we will be carrying and we'll do be doing a lot more floating that's the goal the next big adventure is going to be the tat the trans-american trail i've done the first section of the trail about i think it was 1500 miles or so uh, it's, it's basically, if you're unfamiliar with this, it's basically as much dirt road as possible, trail and dirt, gravel road as possible across the entire country. So starting in Nags Head, Nags Head, North Carolina, going all the way to, I guess it's Oregon, somewhere in uh, the Pacific Ocean, uh, I think it's Oregon. But anyway, um, I'm going to be taking this motorcycle right here on the next leg of the TAT, and this is Rocco. She's a lady, Raquel, but you know, for short, we call her Rocco. Anyway, I'm gonna be gearing this thing up and I've got it just about ready to rock. I've done all the things that I can think of that will be my, my day, -ender, um, uh, day ender problems, things that will stop me in my tracks and not allow me to continue the adventure. And I can go through all that stuff really quick, I guess. Oh, and big shout out, before I forget, big shout out to Southern Honda Power Sports that, that helped me out with this motorcycle and is allowing me to embark on a, a big mission such as the TAT with a trusty steed such as this one. So Southern Honda Power Sports in Chattanooga, Tennessee, if you need some help finding a motorcycle or an ATV or side-by-side -side or something like that, those are the guys to contact. But anyway, starting at the front, I have not changed my tires yet. I'm going to wait till the last minute, so I'm starting with fresh meets some fresh rubbers you can see this one's already getting worn kind of thin i got a little over a thousand miles on the stock tire but i'm just going to wear that thing out and then right before we start our trip i'm going to be uh putting some more aggressive off-road terrain type tires because we're going to encounter some slippery conditions no doubt 
On the front, I've got a, a spare tube. This is a 21 inch inner tube that will fit the back. And in a pinch, you can also use, or sorry, it will fit the front, but in a pinch, you could also use it on the back. So I've got that spare tube right there. It's a heavy duty puncture resistant tube. And that's what I like to run. A little heavier, obviously, but you don't get flats nearly as often. And if you are not familiar with these black diamond strappy doos, these are not just for motorcycles. These are for anything and everything. If you've got to strap down something and you want it to be really secure, it's got, especially if it's something slick or you're attaching it to something slick, these are rubbery silicone like straps. And man, when you, when you cinch those things down, that whatever you strap down does not move. They are, they are great. These are from black diamond. So those are great little straps. Uh, let's see. I have not upgraded my headlight. I may or may not get that done before the trip. It works. It's not as bright as I would like but it gets the job done. Uh, handguards. I installed some custom handguards here. Stole them off my other motorcycle, but they were orange. So I replaced it with some, some custom PVC. I just heated up some PVC and uh, cut them to shape and molded it to fit the bark busters that were on my other motorcycle. So now if I drop the bike, I won't break my levers. And that's the primary primary reason why I want bark busters obviously to protect my hands if I'm riding along and brush and trees and stuff are smacking in there it's going to keep my hands protected but primarily if I drop the motorcycle which I will drop the motorcycle uh, I want to keep these from getting broken uh, let's see big deal right here uh, on the TAT there's long sections between fuel stops sometimes so uh, the stock tank I could get how far was I going? About 100 miles before I was hitting reserve. And there's, I mean, I, I wouldn't make it. I would have to carry fuel in bladders or tanks or spare cans of some sort. I'd have to carry fuel on the back of the bike or in my backpack or something. And that's lame. Didn't want to do that. So I upgraded to this Cherby's, uh almost six gallons, 5.8 gallons, I believe, 22 liters, if I'm not mistaken. And that way I can go... I'm going about 250 miles before I'm kind of looking for gas. So that's, that, I should be fine on the, on the TAT. We should, shouldn't be that long of a stretch between gas stops. So I've got that going for me. I upgraded the front here. The stock handlebars were too low. And when I was, when I was riding, it was really uncomfortable to stand up and ride. And when you're riding off road in rough terrain, you have to stand up if you want to stay on the bike, basically. So if you don't want to crash, that's really an important thing to make sure the handlebars are, are positioned correctly for you, your height and your limb length and all of that. So what I did was I installed some risers here that gave me, I think, uh, three quarters of an inch of height. And then these handlebars are significantly taller and, and wider as well. So I, I like those a lot. I like that setup. I installed, I got rid of the crappy, clunky uh, rear view mirrors. The mirrors were a pain. They were always getting spun around and whacking into stuff and they're just irritating to me. So now I installed this tiny little mirror right here. Hello. <laughs> tiny little mirror right there. And it allows me, basically what it does is it allows me to see if my buddies are still behind me or if a car is behind me or something like that. You know, if I'm something's on my tail. I can see my buddy's headlights and I know they're still behind me if I need to stop and wait up or that kind of thing. And you can see, it basically lets you see underneath your arm. So when you're riding like this, you're getting this view right here, which is not, you know, the best for a rear view mirror, obviously, but it is very small, very light and stays out of my way. Uh, what else have we done up here? Oh, this is a RAM mount for my phone right there. So I can snap my phone in here. It holds it very secure. I haven't lost a phone out of there yet, even when I crash. So that thing is adjustable right there. So I can put my phone there and use the GPS on it and whatever to, to navigate. So that's great. I've got a charging port right here that I installed. This one, you can, you know, standard kind of USB ports right there. And this also will allow you to keep track of the voltage that you got pumping out of your bike so that's pretty cool gotten rid of all the smog nonsense the emission stuff that is that is gone uh don't tell california this motorcycle causes cancer in california so we don't want that smog is gone i deleted all that nonsense and now we're nice and clean over here and there's not a whole bunch of garbage in my way and keeping me from being able to work on on the uh, the carburetor and all that kind of stuff 
let's see things to do i need to get my chain possibly shortened when i put on a, I put on a smaller sprocket a 14 tooth sprocket which geared the bike lower so when i'm riding at slower speeds like in first gear you know kind of crawling along on more technical type trails i can I'm not as likely to stall the motorcycle. It's not run, having to run so fast. I can ride a little bit slower on that technical stuff. And that was important to me. So I, I dropped it down a tooth, geared the motorcycle down, and it still rides comfortably at kind of highway speed, 55, 65 miles an hour. It's not, it's not too high of RPM. So, but in doing that, it basically made my chain a little bit long. And as you can see, I'm, I'm running out of adjustment right here. That's all I've got left. So I've probably got to take a link out of my chain. I have installed a foam air filter. The motorcycle comes with a paper heavy, like weighs like a pound, maybe more canister type air filter. And if they get wet, they're thrashed. Uh, it's hard to carry a spare because they're big and bulky. You can't collapse them. So I replaced it with a foamy that I can wash and clean on the trail if I need to. Well, maybe not on the trail that easily, but you know, if I stop at a gas station or something like that, I could, I could clean the filter out if I need to and they are easily replaceable and I could bring a spare one that doesn't take up any space, doesn't weigh anything. So I did that. Battery's still stock. I haven't changed that one out for a lithium yet. Might do that just to save some weight, but we'll see. Might just wait till I need a new battery. Running the stock seat, it's very comfortable. Very comfortable seat, I like that. I've got my tool kit in here. This is where I keep my tool kit. Oh, and my hat. Everybody always asks about my spider hat. TRC Outdoors. That's where you get them. Best hat ever. Anyway, here's my toolkit, some charging cables and such. That's all the stuff I should need to basically take apart this entire motorcycle, for the most part. Uh, I, when I work on the bike, when I, like today, when I install the skid plate here, I'm going to use that toolkit. And if I find any shortcomings, if I find something that's missing, I need a thing in order to get, get to a thing, then I can... I can swap it now when I'm at home and it's convenient as opposed to on the trail side where I'm like, crap, I need a six millimeter Allen head wrench, you know, whatever. Um, so I want to make sure that uh, I've got all the tools that I need. So I'm ready to go. I'm even got JB Weld and stuff in here, which is pretty nice. Maybe in a future video on the trail side somewhere, we'll go through the, my toolkit. Swapped out the tail light. It had this huge, big, gaudy, plastic snorkel like thing that stuck up and out and it was really stupid i don't know why they have to do that for to meet some sort of regulation somewhere but swap that tail light out that's perfectly bright enough and and works really effectively and it's much more low profile and looks a lot better on there that wasn't a that wasn't a day ender kind of problem it was just a personal preference type of problem like <laughs> that thing was that was obnoxious i just took my tag and i i bent it I bent it around the fender, and that uh, that works perfect. Simple. So to dos, like I said, I'm gonna probably take a link out of the chain. I'm gonna install the a jet kit. The when I did when I redid the emissions stuff, I took all that emissions crap off of there, and I changed it to a a foam air filter. I think it's getting a little bit more air. The engine's getting more oxygen and that's it's messing up the mixture ratio with the stock carburetor. So by changing it out to a, a bigger jet here, this, this Dynajet, Dynojet jet kit, I think I'm gonna be able to get a little bit more fuel in there and it's gonna even out that mixture. It's gonna make it run a little bit better. The only pro time I notice an issue is when it's cold and when I, when I kind of get on the throttle, I blip the throttle fast, it'll, it'll miss. Like it's just, it can't keep up. It's not getting enough fuel. And I, I'm pretty sure this is gonna solve that problem. So I'm gonna install that into the carburetor. May or may not do a video on that, but uh, it's pr pretty simple. I mean, changing the jets out in the carburetor is pretty simple. But what I will do is to make myself more self-reliant on the trail is I will keep the stock jet kit. I'll keep the stock jets and I'll bring them with me. And if I should have a problem with a carburetor from a clogged jet or something like that, I can just swap it out to the stock one. And even though it doesn't run perfectly, it'll uh, it'll still get me home. I can still keep riding, no problem. So this is kind of a performance thing and to keep it from missing. And uh, I'll have a backup 
that I mean they take up they're tiny I mean this box is definitely way overkill for a jet kit so so it'll be tiny I can put it in a tiny little Ziploc bag and put it in my in my tool kit there and I can just have spares ready to go and I can do that on the trail side no problem all right let's get uh let's get our skid plate in here because because I want to make sure that I'm protecting the engine the bottom and the frame of the the bottom of the motorcycle there because if I'm going over rough terrain I'm going over logs or big rocks or something uh, I don't if I take a big hit to the bottom of the um, bottom of the moto right there I can damage the frame irreparably damage the frame which is definitely bad or and or I can crack a hole in my engine case and that's really bad <laughs> so we don't want that drain out all of our oil and, without knowing it potentially and, and blow up the engine so we definitely don't want that so I'm gonna install this really nice aluminum skid plate that will help protect the engine from all the bangs and bruises that I might accumulate on the trail. Oh yeah, I forgot about this. So I've got my spare backpack right here. So oftentimes I like to ride just slick. I don't want to bring uh, a backpack and I don't want to put the luggage stuff, the paneers on the motorcycle. I just want to go for a short ride. And I don't want to bring a whole bunch of stuff. I've got the essential tools if I should have a breakdown or something. But I don't want to bring a whole bunch of crap. Got my normal clothes, riding clothes on, and my EDC type gear, my pockets, that 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 kind of thing. But um, if I should go someplace and pick up something, pick up a supply of some sort, or go have something, uh, go to a store and buy a thing, and I want to be able to bring it home, uh, just you know, convenience type stuff. I've got a backpack right here, ready to go, and this backpack comes from PNW Pacific Northwest Bushcraft. It is a waxed canvasy type material. Very, very handy to have a spare bag that takes up zero space. I mean, it just flattens down. You can put it in your pocket. Uh, so it's really nice to have that backpack ready to rock. And I also will be using this for my work mat. So if I'm on the trail and I've got tiny little parts and bolts and nuts and stuff like that, uh, I can put them on this mat and keep it all out of the dirt, right? If something's covered in oil or something like that and keep it out of the dirt, and I can keep things organized, not lose it in the grass or, or whatever. I can put my tools on here and have everything really organized and nice and nice and neat. And that's, I mean, that's a really big deal because if you lose a one little thing, you know, let's say I lost a jet or something out of the carburetor, that's kind of a big deal. And if you don't have something like this to set it on, it's very easy to do that. So this little little uh, folding up compact cinch pack from PNW is is the ticket. First thing we got to do is we got to remove this, you know, kind of skid plate crash bar kind of deal that we've got going on here. That's got to go away because we're going to use those existing holes for the new skid plate. Always keep all the hardware. Do not get rid of this kind of stuff. It will come in handy sooner or later. I might actually pick up a hardware kit for a Honda. That way uh, I can have some replacement nuts and bolts and stuff if I should shake something loose on the trail. I always use Loctite when I'm replacing stuff, but just in case you still shake something loose, it's good to be able to have some replacements. There's that. So we've got some clamps and we've got some bolts. I'm not sure exactly which one needs to go on first, so we're gonna kind of figure this out as we go. The bolts go here, pretty simply. This clamp is a slightly smaller one and it goes in the back, back here. Like that. We need washers and stuff, but I'm gonna just put that in loose so we have room to get those clamps in. So I slip this one bracket underneath the frame there, around the frame there, slide that into place like that. Get a bolt started perhaps and see how that goes. 
into place, lining up the hole. Can you see that? Line it up the hole, and then I'll get this started. And then I'll, once I get it kind of in place and I get it snugged up a little bit, I can take them one at a time out and uh, put the Loctite on. Just kind of slip that one in there. And I'll wiggle it around. And then I'll wiggle it around until I get the hole to be seen. And I'll stick my bolt in. I would try to give you a better angle of what it is I'm doing here, but it's going to be tough. Just take my word for it here. It is nice having all this ground clearance on the motorcycle, though. That's one of the reasons why I chose this bike is because it's got a pretty significant ground clearance to ride over obstacles pretty easily. But uh, the downside to that is the seat height. It is a tall motorcycle. If you're a shorter rider, the XR650 is going to be it. A challenge for you I think um, but uh, yeah, you can shorten them to some degree but but who wants to go through all that just get a bike that kind of fits you already for the most part would be what I'd recommend there it is loosely in place so that's going to not only protect the frame the tube here from impacts underneath right which is fantastic if it hits any big rock or something it disperses that load that that pressure across a, a bigger area instead of just boom bending the round tubing right there which is very bad obviously and then these right here will help deflect anything that might potentially smack the engine case and that is a, that's a day ender for sure well not necessarily a day ender I have I haven't done it personally, but I've seen guys patch small holes in the engine case with JB Weld and such, and it works. It, it definitely works. But let's hope we don't have to do that because the problem is, like I think I mentioned before, is that you you can do this unknowingly. You won't know that you've run your bike dry of oil, and then, and then you have catastrophic failure, engine failure. Hopefully, you feel that and you notice there's something going on before that happens. But still, you don't ever want to do that. So this skid plate here is kind of a kind of a necessity if you're going to be riding off-road in my opinion torques you see that those are like the star drive kind of deal i'm gonna to have to potentially change that out so it is a t40 right here T40, so what I'm gonna need to do is either get a quarter inch drive T40, which hopefully I can find, and or some sort of adapter to go from quarter inch drive to, to uh, three eighths, and or <laughs> change the bolts on the uh, skid plate to just an Allen, to an Allen head. And that might be what I end up doing. We shall see. Just gonna put a little dab on each one, like that. And that'll keep from these things shaking loose on me going down the road. Don't wanna be losing our skid plate. But I'm still gonna lock tight it. And now I'll just kind of tighten these up a little bit at a time, slowly but surely, so I don't get anything binding. Dunzo, skid plate installed. Bash plate. I can slam into all kinds of stuff now, and it's going to protect this very vulnerable case that was sticking out before. All right, friends. Thanks so much for watching. Really do appreciate it. If 
thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't done so already, and please share the video. Shares help a ton with making sure the message gets spread out to the interwebs. But I'd really appreciate that very much. Let me know what you think about the Apaka bike here. Is there anything else I need to do to it? I think she's looking pretty good. And until next time, what's the worst that could happen? Let's go on three.